David, the man in the arena, uh, what impact has that had on your philosophy as a sportsman? It's, a, it's actually an excerpt I love and uh, was one that I wrote you know, in my journal as a, uh, a young man, sort of trying to get a start in professional rugby in, in Perth. And what's the, the thrust of the message to you? Well, I guess, you know, the, the great line, it's, uh, it's the man with um, blood and sweat and <laughs> dust. You know, the, the, I think the thrust of it for me is, is be careful who you listen to. You know, I think it's very easy to um, take in the, all the feedback you're getting as a, as, a, as an athlete, you're, you're putting everything on the line and um, sometimes people don't appreciate that. Um, so I think it's a, it's a real reminder to be doing just that, to get, to get out there, to um, give it everything and uh, to know that that's, that's all you can do. And um, yeah, you may experience uh, defeat, but uh, um, yeah, at least you've given it everything you've got. And, and be prepared to make errors and have shortcomings and, and accept that. Mm. Is that, that what? That's, that's, yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the, the great things about sport. You learn that at some point you're going to fail. You, you make mistakes a lot. And it's how you react to those uh, mistakes, how you pick yourself up uh, when you get knocked down that, that matters. and, and uh, um, it's for me. It's been a been a, a great lesson. Has that been um, a role that you've been able to pass on to the younger players uh, in the in the Wallaby team, being one of the senior members, because they're exposed. There are so many different fragments now in mm. the media, aren't there? Yeah, I, I hope so. It's it's certainly something that I've tried to. Um, make part of how, how I do things, uh, to really listen to the people who, are, who I care about and respect their opinion uh, and know that there's, there's plenty of people with advice out there that um, probably isn't the, the best to listen to. So in that regard, do you shut yourself off from a lot of the uh, media stroke newspaper uh, analysis of the game? To a large extent. You're, yeah, you're you're going out there with your teammates and you're wanting to play play well for them. And I, I feel like when you when you when you do that, you make a lot of people proud. You know, you, you know what it was like to be that young person looking up to uh, players out there on the field, and you want to be playing in a way that that inspires them to to play the game, to get involved, and learn a whole bunch of you know, values and skills that will serve them well throughout life, not just in, in sport. And when you get to a World Cup, I suppose that's so important to, to actually put yourself inside a bubble, shut off the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah, it can, be, it can be a crazy time. I mean, it's, uh, it's such a big event. Um, it, it really sort of shows just what a global game it is, uh, the number of teams that are there. And I think we've seen over the last couple of World Cups how the, the gap is really... Um, getting uh, smaller and smaller every World Cup. What is the, the ethos of rugby football to you? What are the, the values and the principles that you carry um, throughout your life? Well, rugby for me has, through my childhood and, and um, teens, provided a safe space for me, somewhere where I felt I could be myself, be part of a team, um, gave me a sense of belonging. You know, growing up in Zimbabwe, I, I really enjoyed my rugby and then moving to Australia and very much feeling like an out, outsider. It was somewhere where I, I felt at home. It was somewhere where I made a lot of friends. And uh, I've, I've learned so much from, from rugby. I guess, you know, that uh, you make mistakes, you fail, and it's how you pick yourself up, how you keep going, and how you are, are part of a team and, and your actions affect everyone around you. You've been acknowledged at, at the very summit of the game. Um, how do you handle that? Because I suppose it's important to keep your feet on the ground. So how do you cope with the, the adulation <laughs> and the recognition which is out there? You can't ignore that. Mm. 
Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. I, I've always felt a little bit uncomfortable with like the the individual honours sort of in a in a in such a team sport because um, I think you know ultimately it's about the team achieving something and being part of that. And I think you would often rather play poorly and the team win than you play well and then the the, the team doesn't win. Um, but I think you know. Keep yourself grounded. I've got two younger brothers, and they're very quick to um, remind me uh, just how human I am. So I think a lot of it comes down to having having the right people around you, and, and sort of giving them license to uh, to keep you grounded. And is it about trying to achieve a new PB, a new personal best, every time you step out there? Yeah, you're continually wanting to to build. Um, I think you you know that it's it's very hard to be at your absolute best every week, uh, but that's what you're aiming for. You're you're aiming to continually look for for ways to improve um, in your preparation, and then that leads into into the game. A lot of people have written off of the Wallabies uh, for the World Cup. Um, it's been a tough road over the last 15 Test matches. Mm. Um, right off at their peril. <laughs> It certainly yeah, has, hasn't been an easy um, year or two for, for Australian rugby. There's, there's no way around that. And if you look around, there's some teams that are looking really good. Um, you look at the Northern Hemisphere, a bunch of teams there. New Zealand are uh, you know, obviously the favourites. Uh, and, and South Africa has, has, has really come good. Argentina. So uh, it's, it's a massive challenge, but one that we're, we're definitely excited about and, and up for.